The Tesla Semi Factory in Nevada is going up at a ridiculous pace. We've got a new photograph or two to share, as well as some progress notes from what's going on inside. We'll also cover the Shanghai Megapack factory and a couple other things as well in terms of the Chinese supply chain and how well it's doing. We're going to do all that with my buddy Mark from the Tesla Life. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. Oh, oh, oh. Mark, well, you know it's that time. We gotta, we gotta do our thing here, right? This, wow. Yeah, yeah. So this is. Uh, I'm not going to play this video. If you guys would like to see this video, and I recommend you do, head on over to Zangler Tesla Semi Advocate on YouTube. There will be a link in the description. Um, this is December. This is last December, and then by February they're grading, and uh, it moves along pretty quick here. Uh, by August, we can see foundations going in August. That's not long ago. And then, uh, of course, we've been <laughs> one month later. Oh, my gosh. So insane. And uh, you can see this is October 9th. That's like six weeks ago. And this is uh, last week, week and a half, two weeks ago, I guess. And now you can see the roof is going up on the uh, fourth of uh, the fifth of six segments. And that's about all we've got is all of these, um, almost all of the columns are in and the roof cladding is going on. You can see they're also closing off this wall. This is going to be done this year, at least on the outside. Thoughts on that before we move to the next part of it? Yeah, making, uh, making the building weather tight is probably a priority uh, for them that they want to get uh, the building enclosed. If there is uh, some some different changes in seasonal weather, uh, keeping that weather out will allow them to work unabated inside uh, and complete it at a faster pace. It gets very cold in Reno in the winter. Uh, people think, oh, Reno, Vegas, same thing. Vegas is always hot. Now Reno is high mountain desert. It is dry but very chilly in the winter. And if we jump over here, uh, Zangler helpfully uh, posted saying, no, no, there is in fact concrete inside. Uh, this is from inside the factory. He uh, did not disclose his source. <laughs> I have intel from concrete sources that progress is being made inside the factory. And there it is. Uh, you can see they are getting it squared away. So this is uh, great. I don't know if these drapes are to uh, prevent dust or, you know, debris from getting in, or if it is to better climate control an area, it may be that they may be heating this section. So your comment about weatherproofing would be accurate in that regard. So there is already concrete in at least one of the squares, but probably two and soon three, which means that they would be ready to start configuring parts of it now uh, and configure more of it by January. Yeah, I, I got to believe that um, they're building this in a certain way in order to um, make the uh, production of vehicles quicker. So they're, they're looking at, okay, what has to be done first? Uh, what what production lines are we going to put in? How much uh, floor do they need for the, that spacing? All that kind of stuff's pre-planned and they're building to a, a plan that allows them to get up and running uh, as quickly as possible. As quick as possible. Now, we've also got news from abroad. Uh, I think her name is Sally. No, uh, no, abroad. No, this broad is uh, abroad is never mind. Shanghai Mega Factory uh, looks ready to start mega pack production in q1 uh we don't have uh much uh this is these are some nice outside shots from across the 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 river where the land is not owned by tesla <laughs> exactly exactly uh so this is I don't, I don't know what we're looking at here because this last picture is not from the mega factory uh but let's see uh so yeah this is not the mega pack factory that's all right uh <laughs> Warren's been known to get a few things wrong from time to time, but let's uh, share this here. Uh, we're trying to 
look at this. Uh, so this is what we're looking at here. Uh, there are a number of uh, things here. So ignoring the pictures, but the Shanghai Mega Pack factory is moving along nicely. Yeah, so they, they expect, uh, based on this title, that uh, Q1 2025 is when they'll start production. So they're yes. real close at this point now that we're sitting in late November. Now, how can they move at such a pace? What if they have the factory finished? How can they actually do it? It's because they've got a robust supply chain with unmatched efficiency. Have you heard uh, enough about it to have an opinion on that statement, on that claim? Oh, they definitely have a robust uh, supply chain in China. Tesla has worked day, from day one to add local suppliers to their supply chain. They started with a very few, but now uh, they've ramped up. And, and, and in this particular example, they're telling us that over 400 tier one suppliers are now connected with Tesla. Uh, in China uh, and with the Shanghai plant. So it just makes complete sense. It, it, you're, you're in a, a diverse country. You're in a very, uh, a very urbanized center. You don't want to be slowed up by waiting for shipments to come from all around the world. If you can get them locally because they are produced locally, it gets to you quicker and there's less chance of tie-ups and problems. So why would you not try to maximize that at every turn? And they also added that there are 60 of these suppliers have entered Tesla's global supply chain. So that is also good news. If you're getting good product at a good price and the time it takes to ship them and whatever costs are associated between taxes and freight itself, by all means, uh, use what works best. So that's all very exciting. That's all the news we have on that. So now is when we get into the Q&A. Uh, well, you guys are free to ask questions of us, and you do. So we answer them. And Mark, I know uh, I was a little unfair yesterday with the with the choice of, uh, of what I... So anyway, I went ahead and did this one. Uh, this is a little bit better. This is, uh, you know, last week's... Yeah. This is a montage. <laughs> Well, I assume that this is going to have two more faces next week. So definitely don't make any goofy faces yeah, right now. Yeah, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. There we go. That's the one that I'm going to use. You know it. <laughs> uh, provided I remember. So let's get to thanks for the discussion on the semi-factory. I remember clearly Bear and you looking at the Lucid factory with dirt while all the walls were up. Or maybe it was Nicola. So I've been assuming this construction method is normal and typical. My memory of what has been said, uh, yeah. So the any rumors that, that uh, pushing that out to support interstate charging instead of facility to facility charging? Do do we think that the delay in semi uh, with the release of larger charging capable one megawatt hour charging? Uh, are you hearing any rumors that they might want to delay production until a charging infrastructure along highways is built? I don't think. There's going to be any delay in production because of that, because what's happening is that the orders are already set up uh, with um, customers that have their own charging facilities, or they understand the routes that they're on, and they can return to depots at night after their deliveries, and they'll charge overnight and then be ready for the next shift in the morning. So I think that's what the companies that are buying them have set up for themselves already, and therefore having uh, a robust charging structure on interstates is not required at this early stage. I would agree. I would agree. And also, uh, which routes first? We would see these projects going in today. I don't believe there is enough supply of large transformers to get the juice needed for the kind of truck stops you'd need to charge a bunch of trucks simultaneously right now. You know, what are we talking? Even Even something that could handle five or 10 trucks would need a small town's worth of power connection. So I think it's going to remain at the depots for now. And I don't believe Tesla is slowing down because the demand for those uh, very specific use case vehicles is already sufficient to gobble up the entire first year of production. What I would say, though, is that Tesla should look at one site, maybe adding to a current large supercharger already and putting in a transport side where they could at least demonstrate 
and and talk the points to the public and the transportation community about how this is going to make their lives uh, cheaper to run, more miles, and of course eliminate um, particulates in the air from from diesel. I think it would be interesting to do that. Maybe uh, put it halfway between uh, a, on a very busy route. Uh, yeah, it's a good demonstration. Yep, somewhere on I five uh, or or somewhere between you know uh, Vegas and uh, Los Angeles and Bentonville. Uh, because that's where Walmart is. So uh, Neuralink inside a deer head might make Grok learn how deer think. That's an interesting thing. <laughs> Very interesting. I don't know if Grab I had a, a deer from Michigan, did. put it in an operation room, get Grok installed. What could possibly go wrong? I think it'd be quicker to ask what could go right. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Do you think... Uh, it would be fun if Doge started with Delaware. Maybe our wonderful judge might take a small pay cut. Uh, Delaware Chancery is a state court. Uh, this uh, Doge would not have an impact. Yeah. Uh, how, <laughs> how come no solar panels on the roof of the semi-factory? Well, how come? Because um, it's still under construction. It's, it's going to get there. Like It'll They will there. have solar panels there, but they probably have bigger fish to fry right at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And the rule is with buildings like this, they don't do the solar until they know where all the holes are going to be because you have to cut around them. And it's a real hassle to have to move the solar to cut a hole uh, for ventilation or whatever. Are they going to use prefab flooring? Uh, my answer to that was no, no, it, it needs to be set in place. And we now know we've seen now seen the footage, but no. No, no, it's much too heavy what they're doing. Any... Typically, you saw, see a lot of prefab flooring when it comes to a, a second floor that yeah. uh, you know you want to you want to build quickly. So yeah, and even then they have to cast on top of it. Um, this wouldn't save them time if you if you're able to pour, just pour. Uh, the time saver with those prefab panels on the higher floors uh, or or the roofs really of. Uh, in Texas and Berlin for that matter, is that they don't have to, is that they can have a concrete shell all the way around without having to put up heavy forms 70 feet yeah. off the ground. Yeah. yeah. Do you think Tesla will have many challenges staffing the semi factory given its location? Hmm. I, I wonder that too. That's a, that's an excellent question because uh, we know that uh, Gigafactory Nevada has had its uh, share of difficulty uh, bringing in employees from surrounding areas, um, engineers and such, um, because not a lot of people want to live in that area. Uh, and mm -hmm. that, that becomes a concern for employees. So yeah, I, I, I gotta believe they've done some research because of course they've gone through it once uh, hopefully they've determined that that's not going to be a problem. I think that this might be drawing from a different talent pool. So they may have a renewed opportunity to attract people, but I'm confident they've sorted it out. But I agree that that is a big question. Uh, how do you remove concrete from the sack safely? I, I'm sure we made a joke that this is relevant to but I don't know what it what, is. What, what is, uh, which sack are we speaking about? I think that's the joke, but <laughs> maybe not a Sasquatch, but an Ewok. I don't remember. We make a lot of jokes. <laughs> Rob Womack, why you no count squares? For those who don't know, I, uh, the first You did thing count that... squares at one point. I did. I did. I spent a lot of time counting squares. And the real answer is this went up so quickly, there was no time. Uh, and when it kicked off, I was on my three weeks on the road. And I said, well, when I get back to my desk, I'll start it. And by the time I got back, it was, I was so, I was like, Whoa, this is moving so quick. And uh, they're very time consuming videos to make. Uh, so, and that is all the questions we had on that particular video. Guys, are you going to ask more questions? You're welcome to, uh, as you can see, I've got my uh, Christmas situation underway. I will continue adding ornaments until uh, the end of December, at which time I will harvest the tree and 
and eat the plastic what lemons. do you harvest from the plastic tree that's what i'm wondering yeah yeah uh microplastics you know our <laughs> our grandparents were full of asbestos our parents were full of lead and we're full of microplastics it's uh it's just a sign of the times man wow so guys uh head on over to the tesla life see what he's up to uh everybody else you know like subscribe and stay tuned stay juicy and i cannot wait to hear from you clever albeit chilly robots uh when you are uh freezing your butt off in reno working on semis <laughs>